Welcome or welcome back to Broadway Banter. Today we are going to be talking about all things audition etiquette. What to do, what not to do, and everything in between. And to make sure that you get all the details that you need, I'm inviting on my husband, Austin Cook, who has played hundreds of auditions on all levels, regional, Broadway, tour, you name it. So he's going to give you the skinny on how you should prepare and what you should do in the room for your general audition. Being a Broadway performer is pretty cool and a lot of hard work, but getting there is even harder. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm Adrian Walker. Welcome to 32 Bar Cut. So I'm really happy to have Austin back with us to chat about audition etiquette, because if you've been with us for a while, you know that I always am giving audition tips, but I'm giving audition tips in the, I guess, perspective of a reader and also an actor. And this time you really get to get some tips from someone that sits on the side, the other side of the table all the time. Yeah. So that's why this is a blessing. We're fortunate to have you. Yeah. Um, so thanks for coming back on to uh, Broadway Banter. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> I normally am on the other side of the camera. Yes, this is true. This is so true. It's weird being He's the tech guy. That's right. So um, so let's start with, you know, because we, we talked about, we're going to discuss every level. So we're going to discuss regional, yep. touring, and Broadway, yep. like general auditions. Not that different. Not that different, but bit. maybe who's in the room might be a little different. Yeah, yeah. Like That's, if you, yeah, because yeah. mm-hmm. usually, well, we'll talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to. This is your chance to talk. So, um, okay, so let's start with this scenario. Uh huh. So I get, I'm scrolling and I see an equity call. Yes. And it's for a general audition for uh, a regional production of. Name something. Hairspray. <laughs> Hairspray. Great. A regional production of Hairspray. Yes. And I really want uh, to be uh, Motormouth Mabel. Mm-hmm. But it's a general audition and they told me not to sing anything from the show. Yes. So how would I approach this? Well, you're going to find you want to audition with something that is in the world of the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. So number one, in the world of the show. Who's the composer? Find all the other shows they've done, whatever whatever else they've written. Start there. Don't sing from Hairspray. Don't do it. Because they said don't do it. But if they said do it, then should I pull one of Motor, Motor, uh, Motormouth Mabel's songs or no? Yeah, if they said do it, yeah. Pull one of the songs. Pull whatever they asked for. How many auditions have you played where they actually wanted material from the show for a regional production? Like almost never. Yeah, so it's, it's very rare, right? It's very rare. Very and rare. If they say... If they say sing something musical theater in the style of the show, but all I have is pop music in my book, what should I do? Well, pop music is close to the world of Hairspray. In this case, we're using Hairspray, so it can work. You just need to, again, it doesn't matter if, if something in your book, that whatever makes you feel most comfortable, of course, is first. You want to prevent present yourself in the best light yeah you want to say this is who i am this is what makes me comfortable this is what i have to offer so that that's most important probably Mm -hmm. so if that means sacrificing that to learn a new song quickly Mm -hmm. i only have 16 hours i'm gonna try to cram this new song i don't really feel comfortable i'm not gonna like be in my own skin and all that that's not a good idea okay don't do that but if you have something close, so what you're saying is, I have pop, but I don't have the musical theater thing yeah. you're saying, the same composer. That's okay. That's okay. Go with the pop song, because again, it is in the world of Hairspray. It's kind of pop. It has a pop sensibility to it, for sure. So go with that. Pick something kind of in that, you know, close enough to that that world. And then uh, rock it. And what if the opposite happens? What if I only have, I just finished a theater program, I only have musical theater songs prepared Mm -hmm. and they said they want pop Mm. that's different normally when they ask for pop you do not want to do musical theater it's a really bad idea if they're asking specifically for pop rock uh r&b rap so whatever country if they ask specifically for that don't come with musical theater 
it usually rubs the wrong way. Or if and, they ask for a Motown song, because we're talking hairspray, bring a Motown song. Yeah, right? bring a Motown song. Don't bring musical theater. Um, it, it's just, they specifically ask for that, so you want to honor that. And musical theater generally has an essence to it in the writing of the song itself that's not what they're looking for. That's why they asked for, you know, a specific pop, genre, yeah. pop, rock, because mm -hmm. they want to see what you do with that, how you act that kind of a song, which in general is way more difficult to act a pop song, rock song, than it is to do a musical theater because it was written with the scene in mind. Yeah. So a lot of times there's a reason they ask for the pop rock. They want to see your styling, what you do with that. You saying that and having such a strong viewpoint on that makes me think that we should probably do a video on audition books. So if you yeah, guys are, sure. not you guys, if you all are interested in um, a video on audition books and building your audition book, no matter your type, your age, uh, your gender, um, hit the like button or comment down below. And that's something that we will prepare for you all. So, yeah. um, okay. So I've got my audition prep for this general audition. They also said that they want me to prepare a full song. Yes. Okay. So if they say that definitely come with a full song, definitely come with a full song, come with a full song. If they ask for 16 bars, yeah. If they ask for 16 bars, 32 bars, you're coming knowing the full song. Yeah. There are books out there that just have the cuts, cuts. Mm -hmm. of 32. They have a 32 bar cut in the book, right? You flip through, I think Hal Leonard produces them. Those are great to get an idea kind of, of cuts. And if you're not familiar with making your own cuts, that can be a great help to like, Hey, this is a good 32 bar cut. The shape, someone has done the work for you. Yeah. What, however, what is bad is you don't have the rest of the song. So if they like you in the audition or they want to hear more, which happens a lot. Um, then you should probably even have two on hand then, or at least two or three what? songs. Well, well, ideally, yeah. sure. But if you're going to audition with 16 bars or 32 bars, you need to in the book have the rest of the song. Mm -hmm. That's just good practice, good idea. Is it going to happen every time? Is it going to happen maybe one out of 10 times? You know, but when it happens, you're going to be embarrassed you be ready. and it's not going to look great if you don't know the rest of the song. Then, yeah. You know, you don't want to just know your 16 and 32 bars. You need to know the whole song. Because like for me, for my go to, my go to is Raven from Brooklyn, the musical. I have I don't really have a 16 bar cut. I don't often get asked to do 16 bars. Could I whip one out really quick and say, hey, you know, just play this to here? Yes but they would, really wouldn't get the essence of the song and they would only hear a part of my range. So for Raven, I have it printed in my book twice. I have a clean score that's the full song. And because it's a little different from my cut, whenever I go in, I always think about it before I walk in the room so I don't mess up the cut. And then I have a 32 bar cut for Raven, which shows off my voice. It's not the full song. So whatever they ask me for, I can do it. And it's yeah. just... It's good to feel comfortable in that way, confident. It shows that you have a, a grasp of your voice and your talent and that you are so used to auditioning and so comfortable with auditioning that you know how this goes, that you understand the business of it. Yeah, you, it's really important. And I hope it's not confusing that I'm not saying that you should start at the beginning of the song and you know, yeah, no, make them cut you the off. Juicy part, parts. You should have the cut version, the 30. If they ask for 16, you should have the 16 bars and that's, you know, marked clearly in the score. We'll probably do a video about how to we'll mark up yeah. 16 bars clearly for an accompanist. That's a whole. Yeah, that's a video. whole thing. But make sure you have the 16 bars or 32 or what are they, whatever they asked for clearly marked. What I'm saying is when they love your audition and they say, hey, could just can you do some more of that or do you have some more of the song? You can say, yeah, I'll just sing the whole song for you. No problem. Mm -hmm. That is a really good look, a really good way to present yourself um, to be able to perform then the whole song, which does happen quite a bit. I know for me, especially when I was auditioning regionally and a couple of times um, on the Broadway level, I would go in and I'd have exactly what they asked for. And then they'd ask for something else. And sometimes I had it and sometimes I didn't. And it depends. Like it could be, and Austin, you've sat um, in on this so many times, but mm. say I sing a ballad. Well, they might want something fast paced. Yeah. I've gone in auditions where they're like, okay, we want a jazz song. So I brought in a jazz number. Now they want a fast jazz number. Mm. So you sometimes you have to tailor it to the 
audition call to the general audition, what your second or third options will be. But um, yes. it's it's in your best interest to have them on deck and um, rehearsed and ready to go as if they were your first option too. Yeah, you need those other options. If you come in with just, which I've played a bunch of these where an actor will come in with just the three pieces of paper for that audition. Yeah, no binder, nothing, yeah. That, you know, that's difficult because then when they like you, they want to hear something else from you. They want to hear another song. They want to hear more of that song. They want to hear a contrasting song, which happens the most of any mm -hmm. of these options. You, you want to hear, like, say you present your 16 bars and you're really showcasing the lyric quality of your voice. Sure. These long held belt notes and the mm -hmm. vibrato and there's not a lot of acting happening, but it's just, ah, I can sing. Well, great. The team's like, wow, they can sing. Uh, let's hear something else. And more than likely, they want to hear or see the acting. So yeah, they like, want just to give see, us a story, a story song. Give, yeah. us a, give us a pattern song. Something that, that shows you can act. Yeah. You need to have those options available. And really, that's having a good book assembled, which we're going to do videos about um, for you to help you kind of get your book assembled. But at least have two contrasting songs in yeah. your book. That's a good place to start. Okay. So I've got my two contrasting songs. Yeah. Um, I really got my heart set on Motormouth Mabel. Yep. This is just our through line for this. <laughs> and um, it's time for the audition. It's the day of the audition. Day of the audition. What do you do the day of the audition? Yeah. Well, what do you do from your for perspective? For me, um, so the day of the audition is all about making sure that I'm in the right voice. So the night before, I would have prepared. I would have laid out my clothes. I would know what I'm wearing. I know how my hair is going to be styled. And I would not have had any alcohol or any dairy or anything that's going to cause inflammation on my cords. That's very important to me. I would wake up. I would steam. I would warm up properly, give myself a full warm up, go through my music. And the warm up's a big part. Make yeah. sure you warm up. Take care of your voice. Don't just yeah. go in cold. Don't just scream and holler and then like, oh, I'm warm. Let's go. Because <laughs> yeah. that's actually not going to give you a longevity of a vocal life. I don't know. At least for me. I always like to speak for me. I, I mean, I know everyone's voice is different, but I can't just holler and then go uh, sing something. But um, that's usually what I do. And then because I've always lived in a, a, a train type of town <laughs> like New York or Chicago, then I would leave in time to use the the transportation and yeah. get, get there yourself on time. Your time. You don't want to be stressed, worrying about, I'm going to be late. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's one of the things you can control. Yeah, just get there early. Yeah. Be there early. Yeah. Play on it. What do you wear? Mm. For Motormouth Mabel, um, I would probably try to find a dress that hinted at the 60s. Um, I would definitely wear a dress for anything in, um, in the world of hairspray. If I were a guy, um, I would wear... Um, trousers with a button up even if you could find one of those button ups that have the short sleeves or something like that I would make sure that my hair was freshly cut if I couldn't do freshly cut I would definitely um like maybe gel it or down or something I don't know what your hair types are but definitely take a you know google some looks of the style because those period shows you should look like you tried you shouldn't look like you're walking in 2021 you should look like you tried to yeah live in this era. Like I wouldn't come with my hair um, too modern. I would try to do something that hints at it. I'm not saying put on a costume, but help them out. Do not put on a costume. Yeah. Yeah. Do, <laughs> it's important to say yeah. what we're not, you definitely don't want to come on the nose. Yeah. And by on the nose, I mean in the costume, the hair is legit 60s. Yeah. Like everything is kind of exactly in the show. You don't want to do that. It's you just want, It's important yeah. what, what Adrian's saying is just hint at it. Yeah. You want to say that, that, that you kind of feel in that world, the whole thing. So when they're watching your audition, they can see you kind of in that part without being distracted by the costuming nature of it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do anything that distracts. That's, that's basically the rule of an audition. Mm -hmm. You want to come in. You kind of want to do the work for them. They can see you in the role. They're not distracted by anything either way. They're not saying, why are they dressed just like a character? Or why did they not even try? You kind of want to yeah, be right like, in the middle. She you came in really goth and this is for hairspray. I'm confused. Like yeah. you, you don't want to do that either. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then I, uh, for me personally, because it is, you know, a train city, I will have my dress packed and I'll come in clothes and I'll get there early enough to go to the restroom and put on my clothing so that it's nice and fresh and all the things.
Yeah. And that's what I do. And for something like hairspray, I would definitely wear a heel. If you can sing in heels, great. If you can't, um, then wear whatever's comfortable so you still have that diaphragmatic support and you don't feel, you know, off kilter. Yeah, you want to you feel comfortable. And I think as a general rule, less jewelry is always best. Less jewelry and not too much makeup. I think makeup is great because it makes you look, you know, polished and, and done up, but they really want to see your face. And if you're so beat to the gods that they don't even know what you look like, especially for a general call, they don't know you, this is the first time seeing you, it, it can yeah. say more if you're made up, um, more about you than you might want them to know. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, yeah, it, there's a lot of things that can be read into that if you're too made up. Yeah. Just make sure your hair, if you're, if you're a woman or a long haired uh, guy, that your hair's out of your face. Yeah. You know, I've, yeah. I've seen casting directors, you know, say something before the audition starts, which clearly rattles the auditioner. So yeah. just, you know, make sure it's out of your face. They want to see your face and yeah. hair shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, I know that it's a, it can be a touchy subject, but um, most likely, if if you're a woman in the show, you will be wigged. Um, for men, if it's something like hairspray, you'll probably get a haircut in the style of the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your side of the... Yeah, that's, that's what I would do. Perspective. I'm sitting there. I'm ready. I would probably pop on some headphones if there's other actors in the room to just keep yeah. me focused. And I'd, I'd be chilling until they called me. So then from my side of the desk, it's important to remember to kind of put yourself in the casting director or the accompanist or all, put, put yourself in their shoes as well. Just kind of thinking about what we go through on that side. And I'm happy to talk about it today. Mm -hmm. Just so you can get a sense of how maybe it, it can help. You can better present yourself in these auditions. If you're auditioning at the top of the day, yeah. one of the first auditioners, Normally, everybody's in a great mood. Everyone's Nothing fresh. has gone wrong today. We're on schedule. Everything's feeling good. You're one of the first we've heard today. Everybody's going to be happy. You know, the energy is usually easier. As the day goes by, we've we've seen dozens. If it's an open call, a general call, we've seen maybe hundreds of auditions that day. And we may be kind of tired. The casting directors may be tired. Everybody may be on edge. So when you walk in the room, it's important that you have a light about you, right? That can lift us out of whatever experiences we had. Maybe we just had somebody that was really mean or really kind of rude or, you know, whatever. Your light, your radiance can really lift the mood. And it's happened a lot. I've seen this happen a lot where someone comes in with just like joy, shining joy, confidence, whatever. Their interaction with me, the accompanist is really nice, really friendly, really like together. It can really change the course of the whole day. It, I can't, I guess I can't say enough mm. about how much the way you enter the room matters. Yeah. I've talked about that on, on this platform before that um, just being a reader, yeah. Uh, yeah, you've when seen someone it. enters the room, uh, their energy is already entering with them. Yeah. You don't really have a chance to enter and then present yourself. Your entrance is the presentation. Yeah, that entrance is so important. Just the way you enter the room with confidence. Mm -hmm. It's hard, I know, um, it's hard to enter a strange environment. Mm -hmm. You're nervous. You don't know who's what's going to be there, how it's going to go. Is the accompanist going to be good, what I'm used to? Um, you maybe want, really want the part. That's a lot. But if you start apologizing when you enter the room, which unfortunately I see a lot, a lot all the time where it just kind of is like you enter the room and you're like, is it OK? And, you know, then it's kind of a, like you kind of saunter into the room and then kind of be unsure about yourself or don't know what to say, kind of stutter. And then maybe the cast director has like, just go to the accompanist and mm -hmm. those kind of things. Then you're already kind of you haven't even done anything yet. You know what I'm saying? But it's already kind of put into the minds of the casting, like, there's doubt. Yeah, there's, there's just doubt. doubt. And you don't want that. And it's, um, I think that that matters so much, but people don't talk about it. It's just yeah. kind of an unspoken thing. It's like, that matters so much. It Whereas does. I know as a reader, you've seen some of the, like, people you look up to, like, great actors. Yeah. Are, like, Tony Nam actors coming in for shows, yeah. plays, or whatever. They enter the room, and it's just, like, joy. It's like they've been there before. They're like, 
Ah, it's wonderful. They, they walk directly the, to the accompanist. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. It's also the way they interact with yeah. the folks behind the table. They they talk to them like human beings. Like they, um, you yeah. know, they have a conversation, and it's um, they talk to them as equals. And I think that's important too to not feel like yeah. you know lowlier than thou when you're walking no. in the room to just you know it. Casting directors love that. When yeah, you, you just talk to them like a regular person. Um, still respectful. No one likes haughtiness. I'm not saying to go above that, no. but to just say, you know, if if a casting director says, "Hey, how you doing?" Say, "Oh, I'm good." You know, say a little bit about your day. It'll help ease ease your uh, your spirit um, before you audition. And remember, they're rooting for you. They want you they to be good. Rude. They don't want to waste their time no. with a, a, a truckload of actors who are are, are uncomfortable and, and are terrible at, at doing songs and acting or whatever. No, they want you to be amazing. So all you have to do is show up and and put on that cloak of confidence. And Yeah. And I can say, too, that I've had many actors come in when I play general calls, which is not often anymore, but... I can remember times when an actor would come in and the first thing they would say is, this is my first time. But they did it with a smile. They had a joy about them. They're like, mm-hmm. I'm really nervous. This is my first time, but I'm, I'm excited to be here. And that actually, that is what I'm talking about, too. Mm-hmm. Even though you said something that you, you said it's your first time, mm-hmm. like some sort of qualifier. It could be endearing. In that joy, it was because then we're like, oh, we're so excited you're here. And I remember the casting director and Media Compass, we work kind of extra hard to make sure mm-hmm. you have a good experience. And they're like, you, you know, this is your 16 ball. Yeah, if you're just finishing a program and you're you're hitting the audition market and you, you, you know, you have those nerves, but you're actually excited and confident, lean into the excitement and confidence. Yeah. Um, because casting directors are excited about talent. Otherwise, they wouldn't be casting directors. And I guess what comes with what, what I'm saying is just the honesty of it, mm-hmm. that we love honesty. It's okay if it's your first time. Mm-hmm. You don't need to pretend with the things we're saying, like pretend yeah. that I'm a no, prof- just be I've yourself. Been, yeah. No, be yourself. Because there's beauty in being yourself. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to say, hey, this is my first time, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm prepared. I'm, I'm excited to do this. And then everybody will be kind of on your side mm-hmm. that way. I've seen that happen. Yeah. I've seen that happen. I've seen... Folks come in who are super new. Maybe they're still in their program. And before they come in, the casting director is talking to the director saying, hey, you know, they just finished this program. I saw them at a showcase. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And so the room is primed and like ready to receive you. And um, you just got to remember that, that you weren't called, you weren't called in for, as a fluke. And even in a general audition, it's your chance to introduce yourself. Yeah. Even if you weren't called in, but it's the general and you showed up. It's an introduction. Yeah. So we've been giving a lot of like general, you know, just kind of specific. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're like, okay, I got Get it. Get to the point. Know, but, but I want some specifics. <laughs> okay. When you enter the room, what is the first thing you should do? Should you say, hi, my name is, or should you, what, what to do? Well, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. The first thing you're going to want to do in a musical theater audition, we're talking, you're just supposed to sing 16 bars, right? A general call for musical theater. That's what it's going to be. No monologues. That's not going to happen. You want to come in with your book and head straight to the accompanist. Mm -hmm. That's it. Confidently, nicely. You can say hello to the room. That's fine. But you don't have to introduce yourself. You don't have to say my name is. There's nothing like that. Just head straight to the accompanist and look them in the eyes, him or her. And um, And also there's a couple scenarios where uh, the casting director or the monitor might already have your headshot and it has given it to Uh, the table. Mm -hmm. Um, But if they haven't and you have it in hand, once you go to the accompanist and get them set up, ask them, would you like my headshot? And they'll say yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. Some regional theaters might, you might have to do your own headshot thing, but definitely on Broadway, you never. No, they had on Broadway, they have a whole write up with everyone's headshot. Yeah. You would never Um, hand out. They write notes and yeah. You have your headshot in your bag in Always case the it. monitor wants it or the casting director Always wants have it, it, but you're never going to have to do that in the room for Broadway stuff. So Always fine. have it. Headshot and then on the back, resume stapled, 8x10. Trim it, invest in a paper cutter. Like it should be 8x10. That's a whole video. We're yeah. going gonna to definitely do a video <laughs> on about the, the book, book and the headshots. Headshots, okay. that kind of okay, technical we'll do that. stuff. Um, have you hit that subscribe button? Do us a favor, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> and if you don't like this video, hit it twice, the dislike twice. <laughs> I don't know if we should be saying these things. Hey, sometimes people don't like a video. It's okay. Hit it twice because you didn't like it. That's okay. <laughs> 
But, um, so yeah, so you're heading to the accompanist. Yeah. You're heading to me. We're here. This is important. Don't treat your accompanist like garbage. Garbage. <laughs> Please. You also don't know who they are. They might be the music director, music associate, a composer. You don't know who they are. Yeah. And if they're not... Even still, they're a human being and they deserve respect. And if they're not for that show, they are for maybe Hamilton, in my case, or for something else. (laughs) That's true. And and we remember. (laughs) So don't treat them badly. And also, you have to remember that accompanists, what they do is incredibly difficult. Right. Especially and general a, auditions. And accompanist is taking just random music, sometimes in crazy... Uh, You'll have to tell like some stories sketch. of the oh, music. Oh, so many yeah. stories. Yeah. That's a video. Um, but they're taking that, they're reading it instantly, they're figuring out what you're doing with it, how your vibe is, and they're play, they get one shot. You know, it's difficult. So you want to treat them with respect, with nice, they're, you know, some of the best. I have a at question. What they do. Yeah, yeah. So, like... The whole tempo thing, you know, yes. I remember being in grad school and they're like, let them know your tempo and stuff. So like for a theater audition, you got 16 bars, you got a shot, you know, this is your shot. Yeah. How do I communicate my tempo? You know, my, my music's well marked, it's cut and everything. What's the best way and most efficient way to communicate my tempo? This is good. So let's talk about maybe the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So you come up to me, you hand me your book, put the book there. Then you get a, you know, a little conversation. Mm hmm. Don't have to rush through the conversation. The time is built in. Take your time. Mm-hmm. I'm singing such and such by such and such. I'll be starting here. Point to the music. I'll be starting here. I will be going finishing here. You have marked that clearly. Then you're going to say anything noteworthy. There's a repeat here. We won't be taking the repeat. I have marked that out. Mm-hmm. I do a, I do a sejour right okay. here or okay. a stop, a grand pause. Mm-hmm. I stop here and I take my time. I do this crazy riff and then I'll say, and I, and then when you do the I, I you can come back in with me. I'll t- you just want to kind of have a little banter with the accomplice to let them know. Sure, they can read, but they yeah. don't know what that, they don't know if you're going to do it, if you're not going to do it, if that means if you're a good, you know, an yeah. auditioner who's marked it detailed, if you're not. You just kind of want to briefly talk through the the side with them what you're gonna do Mm -hmm. then at the very end the last thing Mm -hmm. you want to do nice is tempo Mm -hmm. the reason you want to do it last right because if you do it at the beginning the accomplice by the time you do all the banter Mm -hmm. that tempo's gone they're in their own heartbeat or whatever and there's nothing worse than singing a ballad and it's a little too slow and you Mm -hmm. you your breaths are ready for your tempo and they're playing some other tempo and you're like well here we are jesus so, this tempo setting is the most crucial part of the whole thing, yeah. for sure. So how do you communicate that tempo? So when you communicate a tempo, first you want to be very confident in the tempo, yeah. right? You're, you're nervous. There's no mumbling here. You're very nervous, probably, unless you're like a legend, <laughs> in which case you're probably not watching this video. <laughs> but you're nervous. And keep in mind, when you're nervous, things get, tempos get faster. Yeah. So you may have wanted to do a nice one, two, and three, and four, and bam, 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 dee, da, dee, da. That's the name of it. But anyway, that's what you wanted to do. And then when you're giving it, you're like one, and two, and three, and four, and. That's and, you, twice and I don't know fast. if you noticed what just happened. It's faster, but I also accelerated when I was giving the tempo. Oh. So it's kind of like. What was that tempo? What was the tempo? And when that happens with an accompanist, mm-hmm. we're kind of like, mm, we'll do whatever we want because <laughs> it wasn't clear. You mm-hmm. know, you want to be very confident in how you're giving a tempo. So take a second to breathe, mm-hmm. deep breath, and then think about your tempo and then say one, and two, and three, and four, and one. That's confident. Yes. So- and then walk over and that's it. Right. That's it. You just want to give a nice one bar of the tempo. I've heard examples, too, of, you know, like, don't snap. Mm -hmm. Are you offended by actors snapping? No, it's just... It doesn't matter. It helps. I've heard different accompanists. I'm less of a rigid accompanist. I'm Mm -hmm. more of like a vibe accompanist. Like, I just want to vibe with whatever your vibe is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but... It's not about, like, some accompanists are more rigid. I need them to have laminated sheets that blah, 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 and this is how I work. That's a little selfish to me. I more just care about your confidence and how you want to present. If you want to snap, fine. If you want to conduct, fine. If you want to stomp, fine. 
it doesn't really matter as long as you're clear with the tempo and confident about the tempo it's fine with me so like for me for raven because that's my best example yeah. it starts with dum, 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 dum. Yep. and i usually say um keep it steady for me i back phrase ignore that and then i just go on yeah that's an important note but let's give that as an example raven's a great example okay a great way to get the tempo for Raven is to do what Adrian just did, which is to go da, 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 one. And, and that's two, just the beginning and of the three Sorry. and four. <laughs> and, and then you're done. Don't overdo it. One bar. That's all we need. We don't need two bars. We don't need <laughs> yeah. just give us one bar. I feel and like then, I spoke over your demonstration. I was gonna say that's just the beginning of that's just the beginning of the accompaniment. So that's what that little uh riff is. But Please do it again for our, our folks here. Well, I just wanted to give the point that if there is a little lick or a little note at the beginning, it's okay to kind of sing it or to sing the melody. That's helpful. Mm. It's a lot of the time I will um, ask the singer to sing along with kind of the tempo just to make sure because there's some songs that are half time or double time. And sometimes it's unclear to me whether they are going with a double time version or a half time. Oh. But when they sing the melody, I'm like, I can decipher, oh, okay, that's what they're doing. So by going, da, 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 one, and two, and three, and four, and I now know that on the page I saw, da, 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 those are eighth notes on the page mm -hmm. from Raven, right? So slower. I said, oh, it's slow. So those are eighth notes. That's just another cue for the compass to be like, oh, those eighth notes are slow. So when she gave me one, and two, and I, I then it's clear to me that I'm not going to go de -de 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 one, two. Like I, I would just do double time because she just gave me one and two, and I wasn't thinking. You know, again, the companies are reading hundreds of songs a day. We're not always there. So by her going, da -da -da, I saw the eighth notes. She then gave me one. Oh, it's very clear to me what this song is. You want to be clear, short, concise, confident. Yeah. Um, but what you were saying. Um, you were saying something that, that struck me a second ago. Oh, back phrasing. Mm -hmm. Back phrasing is a big problem. <laughs> so in a lot of modern uh, musical theater auditions, you'll get asked to sing a pop song, R&B song, soul song, Motown song, or even some musical theater songs in this genre. Katy Perry. Where you may be, want to back phrase. That's totally cool, except the accompanist in a, in a, again, a one shot environment. Needs to know. They need to know that because yeah. they're going to try an accompanist job. A good accompanist will follow you. No matter what yeah. happens, tempo, you forget something, you go back two bars, a good accompanist will go right with you without saying anything. There's like an unspoken trust that the accompanist got your back. The mm -hmm. good ones, they will. You don't need to apologize. They just, we just do it. We'll see that you skip the verse, that you did something. We'll do our yeah. best to find the you. The same for a reader. A reader should do that for you, too. You skip a line, they should be with you. So what I'm saying is that because of that that rule, backphrasing kind of breaks that rule. Backphrasing is if my job is to kind of stay with you lyrically and make sure I'm kind of with you. Mm -hmm. When you backphrase, I'm just going to slow down. Give you a second. I'm going to slow down. Yeah. No, I'm saying. Oh, I, if you didn't know they were back. If I didn't know. Yeah. I'm going to slow down because I, I think that you're trying to pull me down because mm -hmm. I can feel that you're like behind. So I'm going to slow down because I want to be with you. I want you to be comfortable. So back phrasing, you have to let the accomplice know that you'll be back phrasing. Raven's a great example. Using the same example, I then know because she said, here's the tempo. Da, 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 da. I'm going to stick this tempo. Mm -hmm. She's going to be all over the place behind Front phrase, back phrase, and I'm just going to sit here mm -hmm. because I know that it's more gospel there's going to be back phrasing, mm -hmm. and I'm going to rock my tempo. Oh, I just kicked the camera. Yes. Sorry. Watch those feet. I got to watch those feet. Sorry for the ride. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I hope that that is clear. Confident tempo. If you're going to back phrase, front phrase, move around, let them know so yeah. they can just know to keep this tempo steady and they won't be messing around um, or trying to be with you yeah i wonder if there's more questions i would ask um 
speaking of questions, if you have questions, leave a comment mm-hmm. down below. We do record mm-hmm. these like a couple of weeks in advance. So if you had questions on our last video, then just wait a second. We have seen it. We will make a video to answer your questions. Yeah, we try to respond to all the comments too. So we'll respond, let you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've sung my. Fr- I've, I've spoken with the accompanist. We are in agreement. He or she and I are in agreement. I feel confident. I go up and what do I do? Am I? Do they tell me when to sing? Do I do? We just communicate together and we sing. Does it depend on the room? What? It does depend on the room. Different casting directors, different directors. That everybody has a different thing. Mm-hmm. You won't know. But as a good rule. When you, when you, um, after you, um, uh, step away from that, interact with yeah. the accompanist, after you leave the accompanist, as a good rule, you that this needs to be short. This yeah. next, whatever it is. Needs oh, to be yeah. Short. Also, a good point. How long should this discussion with the accompanist be? How, how, what is too long? Mm, 15 seconds. It probably should be in like 15 seconds. At the so most. that's pretty quick. It's quick. Yeah. But 15 but seconds is a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But you should, so, beforehand you should know what you're uh going to say yes yeah okay you should plan it know what you're going to say and okay it's just the confidence of knowing that it's going to happen pre-planning what you're going to say how you're preparing the sides clearly makes a big difference to have good sides if it's a mess and you're like jumping and you have this page goes to here and then you cut to i mean that's just so clean and cut so we'll do a video on that too to make sure your books are in order um okay cool so now depending on the room they're either going to tell me Okay, go ahead with your song, or they uh, may ask, what are you singing? Right. Most of the time, the casting director or director, whoever's in charge of the room, will say something. So you'll walk up, you'll kind of look, you'll, you'll do a nice, confident stance, and normally they'll say, hi, so what are you singing for us today? And then you'll say, what you're singing for us today? You'll sing. No small talk ever. Um, and if you're sick or under the weather, anything like that, they don't need to know. No, we don't care. No. Nobody cares. I mean, it's not that we don't care about you, but apologizing for an audition, if you make a mistake, if you forget the lyrics, if you just don't apologize. No, never, just keep it moving. And don't start over. Don't start over. Don't ask to start over. Don't just... just it's not keep, that big of a deal. Honestly, keep it moving. after a few bars, they've seen enough, but it's just kind of like nice to have 16 bars or 32 bars. But after they've heard you sing and they've seen your presence and your essence, they've seen enough to know if they want to call you back, honestly. So you don't need to start over. If you mess up, you don't need to start over. If you crack, you don't need to apologize. Keep it moving. Yeah, the only exception, and I'm just trying to make sure I'm giving good advice here, but the only exception is if something is super wrong. Like if the like company is doing double wrong. time and you're like, that is not what I said. Yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it's, if something with the accompanist or if something is really off the wrong song, just something is off. Yeah. It's okay to stop. Like, whoa, just say, I'm so, me. then you, you can apologize. Look at the company and say, I'm so sorry that I didn't communicate this yes. correctly. You can, it's okay to take blame take, for it. Take, to take the Don't L, blame yeah. the accompanist. Never. Just don't do that. It looks terrible. The accompanist is friends with the people hiring you. They work together all the time. Yeah. It just looks bad if you treat the accomplice bad. It's an instant no, <laughs> right? Yeah. So treat them with respect. Take responsibility. Uh, you didn't communicate something effectively. Your music didn't say something clearly. Or maybe it was their fault. It's okay. Take blame. Yeah. Or if you're, even if you're, I know a lot of you all work with your vocal coaches and things. If you're used to your vocal coach transposing your music for mm. you and you have this music that needs to be an F and it's an A, then, you know, you'll have to get the, the right sheet music because you shouldn't expect the companies to trans, transpose on, on the, on the, yeah, we'll talk about that in yeah. the building the book. It's just episode. something I thought of. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of stuff like that about how to make the music correct and clear you're like oh that's not my key and it's like well that's the key that's on the page (laughs) Uh, doesn't transpose the good ones can transpose that's different but you don't ask them to do that um so yeah so if something really bad happens you can stop you can fix it quickly yeah start over that's okay but um if you make a mistake don't even worry about it because a lot of the time they don't even know 
Yeah. We don't know if you sang the wrong lyrics. I have forgotten we don't, lyrics. We don't care if you sang the wrong lyrics, most importantly. Just keep it moving. It's okay. It happens. It's okay. It actually shows, it shows that you can stay in the mm -hmm. scene and stay in the moment under pressure. Yeah. Even when you mess up. I have, I mean, I have said the wrong lyrics um, and just kept it going and they gave me another chance to do it. But this is usually like a callback or um, uh, new music and that's why yeah. I, I go up on the lyrics because it's new. But So the actual singing of the song itself, rock it, enjoy it. Enjoy Have it. It's a fun. performance. It's, it's a, a chance to perform and yeah. sometimes in front of great professionals. Yeah. You get to perform for them. That is so cool. Yeah. You get to work with an accompanist that has an awesome, you know, career of doing these things. He plays for a lot of, he or she plays for a lot of amazing people. Now they're now playing for you. This is a cool opportunity. Just enjoy it. Yeah. Have fun. And, um, and then if they ask you to do another song, then you'll do the same little 15 second conversation with your accompanist. Yeah. You just walk over, have another mm -hmm. conversation. And if they ask you to sing something else and they're not clear, like if they say, can we hear something else? Go with your best next option. But if they yeah. say, we want to hear something in this style, or we want to hear something in this tempo, then you suggest, how about this? And they say, yay or nay, you go find it in your book. That's going to be clearly labeled, which we'll talk about in another video. And then you have that same, I'm talking, but I feel like you should be talking. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. This happens a lot. Um, and this is a lot of information, I know. But this situation does happen a lot where they say, we want to hear something else. What else do you have? I know that that freaks actors out. That That's a panic. It's almost like the panic, uh, what else do I have? And then you're instantly saying, I have this, I have this, I have this. I have this and it becomes kind of overwhelming. I think the best personally, this is my opinion, but the best way to handle this is when they say, what else do you have? Take control of it. Take control of yeah. it and say, because again, because our earlier advice is you already have that other I contrasting song and you this. already have other stuff. Yeah. You should be able to say in that moment, I have this, I'd like to sing for you. Mm -hmm. Take control of it. When you're confident about it and say, I prepared another song for you. Would you like to hear this? I have yeah. another song. How about I do this for you? How about I do this? If you put it in a way that's like, basically like you're saying, I'm going to do this other song for you. Yeah. That makes it easier for us to say, okay. Yeah. Now you will come in. I mean, this is, this has happened and it does happen. You will have some artistic directors that like to fish. <laughs> they're like, no, 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 no. You know, and they're just, what else? What else? If you, if you happen to come into that, um, mm -hmm. you know, just really take control of the situation and say what you have prepared. Yeah. Don't, don't, um, don't let them run you. Don't, in other words, don't perform something that you did that eight months ready. ago that you haven't looked at and like you sort of know, but no, it don't waste anybody's yeah. time. Cause there are fishers. They're, yeah. 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 But I, well, I guess what I'm saying is that the fishing comes normally from what else do you want to hear? Like the actor saying, yeah. what else would you like to hear? I think I have this or I have this. You're, well, you're then saying to them, like, tell me what to do. And it's always better if you're not telling them, what should I do? Yeah. If you're more saying, I have this I'd like to perform for you. Or I, I like this. Which I think speaks to the next video we want to do about audition books. Because yeah. oh, I if take you... The camera again. My feet are long. I have giraffe-like limbs. Well, can you keep them still? My limbs are so long. We're going to have to move the camera. Like, okay. So this also speaks to the audition book thing, because if you have songs that are less popular, then you will get less fishing. So a lot of times uh, artistic directors mm -hmm. for regional productions uh, don't want to hear something they've heard all day. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, no, 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 we've heard that five times today because it's a popular song. But if you have songs that aren't as popular, then you're kind of safe with that experience. That's so true. That's why Raven is my go-to. No one sings Raven. No one sings it. Yeah, no, no, not a lot of people sing Raven. I think it was popular a while back, but yeah. nobody sings it anymore. Which reminds me too of like like bending, like gender bending or other things. That, yeah. that can be cool. like I remember, I still remember this one audition by this young... I think he was like 20 years old, really short, and um, a guy came in and he sang Poor Unfortunate Souls, <laughs> which is Little Mermaid, if you don't know that, that's what Ursula sings. And it's typically done by a powerful woman, yeah. right? An older, powerful woman normally. Yeah. And he sang it as this like kind of small, little, you know, 20-year-old dude. 
and it was great. But I remember, but I was thinking because you said That's a popular song, you're like, normally, eh, I don't sing it like a Disney popular song because everybody does it. But that makes But in difference. that case, it was such a unique choice. Yeah. And his choices were so out there and exciting that I still remember it. Well, that was like years ago. Stuff like that happens sometimes. So you just want to be unique, be yourself, be unique, be confident, all the, you know, these and things. And then at the end, to thank you or to not thank you. What, what? Oh, definitely thank you. Yeah. So you just finished the song, you performed, then that's it. Don't wait for them to say something. Don't make it awkward. You sing the song. If they want to sing more, yeah. You say, you kind of, you know, you, wait you, you clearly see, wait, yeah. you're done with the scene. You wait to see if they say something. You say, thank you so much to the, to the team. A uh, collective thank you, not not thank don't you. Don't say thank you, John. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, but <laughs> thank no, you to no the shaking table. hands. Yeah, they I think someone someone, someone put COVID. that on a com comment before, but then they deleted it before I could respond. Wait, what do you mean? They um someone commented on one of my videos. How do I say thank you to everyone in the room? This is your answer. You do a collective thank you to the, to the table. table. If you have a reader, but this isn't an audition experience where you would have a reader. You thank the reader. Thank the accompanist. Out. At the most, you'll have three thank yous. At you the thank, bare minimum, And two. you thank the accompanist when you get your book. Yeah, when you go get your book, thank you so much. And sometimes the casting director will introduce the accompanist. Try to remember their name. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Amanda. Done. Out. Yeah, and in equity, I mean, Broadway auditions, the accompanist name is on the sheet outside yeah. when you sign in. They have to post that. So you should make note of their name, you know. Mm -hmm. Make note of who they are and, um, yeah, thank them. Yeah, don't, yeah. So I hope that we covered a lot. I know this is a, a long lot. video and it is Broadway banter, so there was a bit of a banter here. If you made it all the way to the end, congratulations, you're our favorite. Thank you for doing yeah. that. Thanks for watching us to the end. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do a part two where we talk about callbacks, so stay tuned for that. Yes, callbacks. And um, a little bit, a little bit different. A little, yeah, definitely different. S same premise, but a little bit more detail. Yeah, and yeah, there's so much to talk there's about. There's some other stuff with callbacks. So yeah, we're yeah, yeah. So. About. We'll probably have that either next week or soon. And yeah. um, so stay tuned for that. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments or whatever, uh, leave that down below. Yeah. And we'll see you next week.